You know, uh, every week we uh, expound the Bible and we preach messages from the Bible and uh, seek to explain truth to help us do life well and to understand God and to understand life. But today I'm going to do something very different. Today I want to speak about the Bible as a whole. And in fact over the next few weeks I want to, uh, with, with the other pastors, Pastor Paul will be preaching next Sunday, but I want to do a series on back to basics. I was going to call it boot camp, but uh, I thought let's, let's do back to basics, that doesn't sound so hard. But you know, you know when you build a house, you put foundations down and sometimes it can be challenging to get those foundations down and you don't always see them later on, but they are so important to the house because when you start building those bricks and you put that timber on that house, you put the root, you want it to be able to stay there. When, it, when a storm is coming, you want to know that your house is solid. And if we get some principles in our lives and have some understanding in regard to, you know, what it means to really be a Christian and understand it, I think that's, that's very important, especially in the age that we live. And so today I'm going to share some things uh, with you that uh, hopefully will help us in our journey with God and especially understanding His Word. In, in the beginning of my Bible, actually, uh, it's Psalm 119, 105, it says, Your word is a lamp to guide my feet and a light for my path. You know, in the old days, in the, when my parents, you know, were a lot younger, they, they used to ask the question, if the house burnt down, what would be the first thing you'd take from the house? What would you go and grab? A lot of people would say photos. But in, in my parents' day, they would always say, I'll get my Bible. I think that has changed a lot because uh, the, the Word of God is, is so available to us in many forms, on our phone, on the internet, it's, it's all there. But the Word of God has been very precious to Christians over the years. And my prayer is that each and every one of us would value our Bible. So if you've got your Bible on your phone or wherever it is today, I just want you to wave your Bible in the air and say, this is my Bible. I love the Word of God. You know, uh, we, we have a world today that has a super highway of information. And in the in the last days, in fact, in, in Daniel 12, it says, Many will rush here and there, and knowledge will increase. You and I are bombarded with information today. In fact, the, the, the techos out there now say that uh, we are going to chase you with information. For many years, if you wanted information, you, ha you had to go and get information. You had to actually go down to the local news, uh, you know, the, uh, buy a newspaper. You would have to turn on the TV to, to get the news or, or information. But today, with that wonderful phone of ours, information chases you. Bleep. I've had to turn a lot of the sounds off on my phone because uh, it's going blip, blip, blip all the time and, and making noises. And so it tells me when I get an email, it tells me when I get a text, it, it uh, comes up and tells me the news now because as soon as you put an app on your phone, that app wants to communicate to you. And that's how the retail world, the sales world, it's, it's chasing us now with information and so information has greatly increased over the years and will will continue to increase. I just love Google. It's my second brain. You know if you just want to know anything just get on Google. The information highway is absolutely outstanding and, and you know it has wonderful wonderful benefits. But you know knowledge is one thing, truth is another. 
There's a lot of information out there. There's a, there's a lot of uh, thought. But what we need most of all in our lives is truth. And uh, as, as we un become, begin to understand that, you, you realize that truth is so important in a world of information. Truth today in, in our world is based very much on people's experience. And so it's how my experience is that I understand truth. So whatever works for me, that will be my truth. Or what the majority of people are saying is, is how I will live my life. And so we are seeing a, a great change over my lifetime. I've seen a great change in what people once upon a time c considered moral once upon a time considered right. Abortion is legal now in Australia. Forty years ago it wasn't. Prostitution is legal in Australia. Forty years ago it wasn't. And there's numbers of other areas that we could say today in the moral area that has changed because society has changed. But my question to you this morning is has truth changed? Has God's word changed? And so as Christians, we need to, to come back to, well, there's information, but what is truth? What is the right thing? Evolution says that we have no creator. Once you don't have a creator, then you aren't accountable to anybody. So evolution, even in its, even in its theory and, and its, uh, as a Christian, I'd say it's lie, it, it allows people who believe it not to be accountable to anyone except themselves. And so they can make their own rules. And so we've got a world today that basically makes its own rules when it wants to, how it feels, and, and, and uh, that, that, will, that will impact us all in, in many areas. Christianity, however, is based on the teachings of the Bible. We are accountable as people to God. In the beginning, God. And so God made us and he has a right over our life. And therefore, we are accountable to him as God. And so we are faith-based in our convictions and we are accountable to God as our creator. Up to now in Australia, evolutionists, uh, you know, the theory of evolution has come through, the change has come through, and, and basically it's been, well, we agree to disagree. The church has been standing there, and the church, you know, the, uh, the Catholic Church hasn't moved on, on its uh, conviction that the Bible is the Word of God, and I say thank God for that. Sadly, some denominations have moved away from saying, well, look, the Bible is the absolute truth of God. It's the inspired word and it's the infallible word of God. So some have moved away from that. But however, many denominations still hold to that. We certainly as the ACC hold to the fact that this Bible not only contains the word of God, but it is the word of God. It's the, it's the God-breathed Word. And, uh, and, and by that, we actually, and if you believe that, what they will call you today is a fundamentalist. And I'm going to, I'm going to stand before you as your pastor today and say, I am a fundamentalist. Fundamentals are really truths that you believe that are, that are unchanging and that you won't move on for anyone or anything. If you don't... See, when you think about it, everybody, to a degree, has fundamentals. Some people's fundamentals say, well, I'll do what I want to do and nobody's going to tell me what to do. So they have fundamentals in their own way. But things are changing. 
things are changing in this nation. So up to now, the world, the media, has basically looked at the church and said, yeah, you Bible bashers, you're out there, you've got your opinion, we've got ours and, and we'll live with that. But now there's a change and the change is this that you Christians are causing problems in our nation. And people are beginning to become haters of the truth and haters of the fundamentalists because you are holding to values that they don't hold and you are holding to things that they don't agree with. For example... If, if we hold to values that say we believe that even if a child is in the womb, it is still a living human being, even though it's in the womb, then it's, it's people that hold to these values that cause other people to be distressed. It's your fault that that mother who's had an abortion now is in depression because you are holding to those values. It's your fault that the homosexual got depressed and committed suicide because you hold to your values of moral purity. It's your fault. You see where I'm coming from? And so you will see and we will experience a change and we are experiencing a change and that is going to get worse that's the bad news I'm wanting to alert our church to what's going on out there because what what alerted me to this was actually a good friend of mine who was my youth pastor many years ago and he he held an ACC credential but about four years ago, he lost his father, he lost his marriage, he lost his house, and he lost his health, he lost just about everything. And in his experience, he said, God is a non-interventionist God. He doesn't care, he's abstract, he's out there somewhere, and he began to lose his way. And in his pain, he lost sight of God and then chose to, to say that, well, the Bible isn't relevant for today. How can, how can people condemn people who are in love? If two people are, are in love, even if they are of the same sex, how can you condemn that? And so... His journey has led to now going further than that and now he's begun to attack the church, he's begun to attack the values that once upon a time he had. And so it, it hurts me because he's, he's a good mate. I've said to him, you'll always be my friend. I'll always be there for you. But I've got to the point now where I can't have close fellowship with him because of his stand. And so it's hit me personally and, I, and, I've, and, and from some of the things that he has said and, and so, some of the stuff that's in the media, I, I've begun to see that there is a change in our nation and uh, just this week um, one of our guys gave me this quote from George Orwell. The further a society drifts from truth, the more it will hate those who speak it. That's a pretty powerful thought, isn't it? That's from George Orwell. The Bible and the church are under attack. By the way, if we have an anti-obesity campaign in the nation like we have, are they guilty of people being depressed? or even committing suicide. Just a thought. The new rule of thumb seems to be this. I read this this week. If you don't like what you are saying, even if it's true, 
I will simply dismiss you as a hater and your words as hate speech. There you go. It's simple. Now we no longer have to deal with the truth. We can just dismiss it as hate. Jesus said that in the end times and in Luke 21, 17, he actually was speaking about what will happen and he said, there'll be more earthquakes. We got an earthquake the other day. I was amazed that we had an earthquake in Queensland. And Jesus was list, listing off things that would, that would happen. There'd be wars and rumours of wars and there'd be trouble in the earth. And then he said this, he said, everyone will hate you because of me. And so I just believe that we need to be aware that, you know, in the times that we live, there, there are going to be challenges. And uh, it's, it's, it's not going to get easier for us in the church. But I want to say we do have a message that saves people. We've actually got a message called the good news. And the good news of Jesus Christ is something that changes lives. It's changed my life. It's changed your life. And that's why we're here on planet Earth is to keep preaching the good news and not to compromise what God has said. Amen? And if I even just said that this morning... I hope that would be worth coming for because it helps you and I understand what is happening in our society. But what we need more than anything is truth. You know, I heard a quote years ago, if you don't stand for something, you'll fall for anything. And, and at the end of the day, you know, we need to be standing for some values. We need to be standing for what the Word of God says and that our lives as Christian and as a Christian church, we stand for what the Bible truly says. Jesus said, I am the way. He didn't say, I am a way. He said, I am the way. I am the way. Truth. <laughs> and the way. I'm the way, the truth, and the life. The Christian message is actually exclusive. So not only are we fundamentalists, we are actually exclusive as well. Because our message doesn't say, well, there's many ways to God. Take your pick. Jesus came out very strongly and he said, no, I am the way. I am the truth. I am the life. And so with our message, there is even an exclusivity in that. And so what you Christians, you believe that Jesus is the only way to God. Yes. That is going to be challenged more and more. And so in, in our world today, we need to understand what the Bible says, what we, what we believe, and that's why we've started, you know, Bible study on Wednesday nights. I encourage you, we had a great night to start off with last Wednesday night, and we need to know what the Word of God says. How can we defend it if we don't even know what it says? How can we live it if we don't know what it says? And so uh, Jesus was clearly saying there that He was truth, and you will know the truth and the truth will make you free. Romans 1.25 says that they exchanged the truth of God for a lie. And as I was thinking about this message today, I thought, hey, isn't that where this whole trouble started back in the garden with Eve? And the serpent comes along. Ta-da! Ta-da! I don't know whether the devil looked like that, but has God said? You know, the first thing that Satan put into Eve's mind was a seed of doubt. And I want to tell you, the devil is so clever at putting seeds of doubt. The fact is, the devil is too good 
for all of us. Without the Holy Spirit, without the Spirit of God, we're all beaten. All have sinned. All have fallen short. The deception of the end time will be a deception that the Bible says even the very elect, some people that were, were, were solid in their faith got deceived. We need to be aware of what, what is happening because deception can, can seemingly be true when you think about it. Try before you buy. In other words... If you want to get married, why don't you try before you buy? That, that seems to be a logical thing to do. Well, if we're going to make life work together, well, why don't we live together first? O on the face of it, for a person that doesn't fully understand everything, and none of us understand everything, Try before you buy can sound logical. And there's a lot of things that can sound logical. Well, if they're in love and they're not hurting anybody, just, just let it be. And so deception comes in as a seed of doubt. And that's how it starts. And, and we need to be aware that deception is going to come like as never before. So... Today, in, in, in uh, 1 Timothy 4.16, it says th these words, and I'd like you to read them out with me because this is what it says will happen in the last days. Or Paul was speaking to Timothy and he said these words. Let's go. So you see that they'll reject the truth and that's, that's what is happening now and that's the, the challenges. The Antichrist seeks to come onto the scene and a spirit of lawlessness comes which is a spirit, I'll do my own thing, I'm not going to do God's thing, that it, it, it will just be, well, no, I'll, you know, the Bible is, and, and they'll try to pull, pull holes in the Bible and, and that is being done you know, and has been tried many, many times. So it's important that you and I can have a confidence in the Bible. So today, I want to, in the next few minutes, give you some understanding of this wonderful, wonderful book, the Bible. There are many compelling reasons for believing that the Bible is God's Word. Not only is it the best-selling book in the world, the Bible has many aspects of it that help us believe in it. The Bible is very unique. It is one and only, and it has no equal. In, in all the world, the Bible has actually no equal to it. There's no other book like the Bible in all the world. It's never been written. It's never been done. It's never been said like the Bible has said. The Bible was written over 1,600 years in other words, a, a time span of 1,600 years, all these writings were put together. It was put together by 40 plus authors. In other words, 40 different people actually wrote the Bible as they were inspired by the Holy Spirit. 
They were from every walk of life, from kings, peasants, philosophers, fishermen, poets, statesmen and scholars. Moses was a political leader trained in the universities of Egypt. Peter was a fisherman. Amos was a sheep farmer. Joshua was a military general. Nehemiah was a cupbearer. Daniel, a prime minister. Luke, a doctor. Solomon, a king. Matthew, a tax collector. And Paul was a rabbi. Many, many people, different people, wrote the Bible. And it was over a long period of time. The Quran is very different. The Quran was written by one man at one point in time. So don't try and let people compare the Quran to the Bible because the Bible was written by so many different authors over a whole period of time over many different places. It was all put together and the incredible thing is it all matches, it all joins and it all says the same message. Do you know the safety in numbers? Everybody say the safety. The safety in numbers. And in the church of Jesus Christ, there's great safety in the body of Christ because you can get a lone prophet out there saying a whole lot of things and deceiving people. And uh, that's what we would say about the Quran. The Bible was written in different places. Moses was in the wilderness, Jeremiah in the dungeon, Daniel in a palace, Paul in a prison, Luke while traveling, John on the Isle of Patmos, David while being hunted like an animal. The Bible was written in different times. David in times of war, Solomon in times of peace. The Bible was written in different moods. Some wrote at the height of joy, some wrote in deep times of sadness. The the Bible was written in different continents. It was written in Palestine, Europe and Asia. The Bible was written in different languages, Hebrew, Aramaic and Greek. The formation of the Bible is nothing short of a miracle. That all those people and all those places could potentially come together and have one message of salvation in it. It is truly a literary miracle. The Bible speaks on many different topics. It speaks on history, science, hygiene, prophecy, genealogy, romance, theology, adventure, travel. It's truly an amazing book. The Bible is God's book and he is the author of the Bible. 2 Timothy 3.16 says, All scripture is inspired by God and profitable for teaching. We need to value our Bibles. Mary Jones said, Books are the best method of preserving truth. If you want to preserve what you have said, the best way is to write it down. You can tell somebody something. But you know, the story gets changed, doesn't it? Oh, I didn't think, uh, that's not what I thought you said to me. And stories can change. And, and uh, some traditions, some, you know, of, uh, some cultures have stories that are told and, and they aren't written. But they, those stories can change. There's no better way than keeping accuracy than, than having something that is written. Do you know when the scribes actually wrote the Bible or, or they, they, they were writing the, the, uh, the, the scriptures, every time they would come to Jehovah, they would actually go and have a bath. They would totally have a wash because God was so holy to them and the Bible, they reverenced the Bible so much and they, 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 they in their own hearts and minds said, this is holy scripture. And, and we need to be so careful and so pure as we are translating uh, these scriptures. And so the Bible has been kept um, throughout the centuries by people also that have valued it. And uh, it's, it's a trustworthy book. The Bible helps us understand what God is like. You know, when I went to Bible college many years ago now, the, the most interesting subject for me and the one I love most was theology. Because theology helps us understand the person of God, who God is like. What is God like? And you know, you've got to understand what God is like to fully interpret the Bible properly. If you know the personality of the person that wrote it, you'll interpret it rightly. And so the Bible actually helps us understand who God is and understand how we interpret the Bible. The Bible helps us see God's great plan of salvation. The Bible helps us understand ourselves. 
The Bible is a guide to us. The Bible helps us guide our pathway. I would say to you that as a, as a person, over the years, that 90% of God's guidance in my life has been through reading the Word of God. Do, do most of you find that? I find that as I, I read my Bible, God speaks to me. And so God guides us in our life. And so generally, uh, and that's what the, the, the Bible clearly said. I, I read that out at the beginning. You know, thy word is a lamp unto my feet, a light unto my pathway. The word of the Lord leads us. And so the Bible guides us in our lives. John MacArthur actually gave a number of things that helps us with the authenticity of the Bible, to, to say that the Bible is the Word of God and, and the Bible is true. The first thing he says to us is experience. And he says that the Bible is the Word of God because people experience what it says. When we ask for forgiveness and a brand new life, thank God that God does that in our life, that, that Jesus does save. And the, and the Bible works, and so through experience, even though that's still subjective very much, the Bible is authentic, it's real, because it works in our lives. Also, the Bible is authentic because from a science point of view, the Bible also presents a most plausible understanding of the universe and the existence of life. So, you know, to believe that a blob out there somewhere got excited and mutated and, and, and then something else happened and it all came together and, and, and somehow you and I are here today and, and it just all, and the universe, you know, the universe is fragile. Our ecosystem is fragile. And, uh, you know, to believe that a non-intelligent being put all this together is crazy. And so... The Bible helps us understand that there is an intelligent God out there. There's a person with rational and who, who actually put it all together. And so the Bible, from a scientific point of view, it, it certainly speaks of being authentic. The Bible has miracles, speaks of miracles in it. And, and uh, many, many miracles are recorded. In fact, the Bible is a book of miracles. And so miracles in themselves give the Bible uh, authenticity and Jesus certainly did miracles. Jesus rose from the dead and 500 people witnessed his resurrection. It wasn't five, it wasn't 50, it was actually 500 people saw that. Now some people can say, oh you know I woke up last night and I saw this and saw that and something else and you think yeah well they're off the planet. You know, you, you had too many pills, or you didn't have enough pills. <laughs> but if 500 people at the one time, at the one moment, said, we saw him, that is good evidence. Hello? <laughs> if that wasn't true, it would have never got it printed in the Bible. They would have thrown it out. Come on. But all those facts are here and, and, and we see that the Bible is the Word of God through its miracles. The Bible in the Old Testament had 300 references to the coming of Christ, that the Messiah would come. And so prophetically the Bible has spoken and is still speaking and, and makes predictions. And so we have seen those prophecies. So even prophecy alone is, is a significant voice that this is the Word of God. But you know, above them all for me, above all those things for me, there is one thing that helps me believe in the Bible. And that is this, that Jesus Christ himself said, this is the Word of God. Jesus quoted the Old Testament. Jesus knew the Old Testament. The Old Testament had been written when Jesus was a boy. Jesus Christ, for me, the Messiah, the one who lives in my heart by the Holy Spirit, Jesus himself spoke, preached, 
authenticated the Word of God. The apostles also quoted the Old Testament. And so we have today a record that Jesus Christ himself established and approved. And that for me is, is, is a major bicky in the tin. <laughs> to know that Christ himself approved of the scriptures. And he said in Matthew 5.18, he said, Until heaven and earth pass away, not the smallest letter or stroke shall pass away from the law until all is accomplished. The Bible is the word of God. And my prayer is that we as a church, that we as a people will hold to its value. Because I want to tell you, folks, there's a whole lot of shaking coming on. The people that once upon a time would get thrown in prison for certain things will change. And now you will see those who stand for values and those who stand for Bible values, they will be the ones who are thrown into prison. If I stood up here and said certain things this morning by the laws of our country, I could potentially be thrown in prison, even today, with where we're at. And so we, we have to make a choice. We have to say to ourselves, am I going to be a fundamentalist? And I, am I going to be a person who holds to the value of the Word of God? See, you can't, you can't just say, that bit in there, look, I like the rest of it, but that bit in there, no, I don't know. I don't think I want that one. Hang on. I'll just tear that page out, then I'm happy with it. The moment you tear one page out, you might as well throw the whole lot out because you have made a conscious choice to say, no, it's not true. There's, a, there's, there's people out there who say that the Bible contradicts itself. Well, it, it seemingly can look as if it contradicts itself in a few places. But when you study it and you look through and you understand it in its whole, you'll realise that it doesn't contradict itself and, and in the main, the Bible just joins together so beautifully. Isn't it amazing? 40 different authors. How could 40 people write in the same book and have the same message? It's a miracle. It's a miracle. <laughs> it's alive. It's the Word of God. It's real. You can trust the Bible. People have been trusting the Word of God for thousands and thousands and thousands of years. The devil hates the Word of God because he knows those who will stand by it will, according to the Word of God, will keep their salvation. Let me come back to that verse that we had before in Timothy, which speaks of holding on. 1 Timothy 4.16 says, Keep a close watch on how you live and on your teaching. Stay true to what is right for the sake of your own salvation and the salvation of those who hear you. Amen. So there you go. Well, I might have stirred some of you up this morning. I hope I've stirred your faith. I hope I wanted to say to you as a church because you don't know me well yet but I wanted to say to you as a church your pastor is going to hold to the word of God and this church is going to hold to the word of God and so uh, I'm, I'm, I'm saying that in a, in a message today but I'm, as I've said I've said a whole lot of other things because it's going to be challenged it is going to be challenged it's going to be challenged far greater in the years to come. So let's, let's as a church get our heads into the Word of God once again. Let's, let's get our hearts into the Word of God and uh, live by it, hold it, and you know what? You'll have the best life. You know, if God wasn't real, the Christian life is still the best life on earth. Don't lie, don't murder, 
You know, I, I, never, I never wake up of a morning and think, I hope I don't go to jail today. That's only because I'm going to heaven. It's only because I'm, I'm living right, you know, but there's a lot of people that, that wake up of a morning and think, I hope they don't get me today. I hope I don't do something stupid that I'll end up in jail. The Christian life's a great life. It's just, I am blessed. We're blessed. Amen? And, and, and we're just such a blessing to other people. But we're not going to please all the people all the time. And that's what I've tried to say this morning. Could the worship 